Hi, if you're on the broadcast, welcome to Glue Wednesday. I'm coming on five minutes early to give the uh, Facebook a chance to build the audience, let people know I'm on, and then we'll start the show in less than five minutes. So you still got time. Of course, you could also pause it because you're on broadcast, but you still got time to go run and get another drink of water and come in and sit down. I had to make sure I had some water today because I've got a long message. And uh, but it's it's a really exciting one for me. So hey Tony, yep, you <laughs> I figure you be on because you really uh, uh, part of the inspiration for this message. Hey, what's up, Barry? Oh, so I figured out when your lunchtime is then, huh? Yeah, I still got to talk to you, my brother. All right, but yeah, we've got uh, less than four minutes. Hey, right, hey, what's up, Martha? Good to see you. All right, I can't B L Martha B L. All right, well. Martha, let me know who you are, because I can't, I, I can't really read that. Let's see. Hmm. Martha, where do we know each other from? We got three minutes left to, before we start the show. <laughs> oh, boy. Because, you know, that's one of the blessings, by the way. You know, I'm about to be at 500 friends on Facebook. And at 500, what they do, and this is the legitimate part of it. This is not the bogus. They cut you off in that they don't allow you to have more friends. If any, if I get any, if you get friend requests past 5,000, they don't allow them to be your friends. They just automatically put them in as followers. So uh, not a bad thing, but, you know, it's just that uh, I, I, one of the things that I enjoy saying and feeling is that out of my uh, 4,993 friends, I'd say that easily I know 3,000 of them, and there's probably, you know, probably a good chance that I know 3,500, whatever, you know, most of the friends on my uh, Facebook page are people that I've actually met, and uh, so I don't necessarily remember every single person that I met or where I met, but I tell you, you give me a memory, and uh, you spark a memory, and I'll, and I'll finish that memory off with you, and, and just again, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, to Glue Wednesday, but also for being my friend. Uh, that That's a wonderful joy. And if it's the first broadcast, you should know that Glue, hey, what's up, William? Glue is G-L-U-E. God's love undoes everything. A lot of times people have decided that Wednesday, the cliche is that Wednesday is hump day. And so me with my uh, vocabulary sensitivity, as I always remind you, control your vocabulary. Don't allow your vocabulary to control you. It will Excuse me. That will help your stress. That'll help your communication skills. That'll help your um, you control your anger. Everything is just it's important to control your vocabulary and control your temper. Hey, what's up, Torrance? Oh man, I was one of great rivalries we had in community league basketball back in my days in Chicago. So that's that's the coach. That's my coach there. Hey, hey, Dave, man, happy ongoing birthday, but Dave. One of my, my great Toastmaster, original Toastmaster friends when I was in Chicago as well. Okay, we got less than two minutes to start the broadcast. But this is how you see, like, I start to recognize names. <clears throat> and just that, because I don't give you a shout out doesn't mean I don't know who you are. It's just sometimes it, some of them hit me and, and I keep going. Uh, but send me a memory and I don't have a problem giving you a shout out. Say, hey, you know, we met at such and such a place. But what I was saying was that it, it's such a blessing to know um, – we're well, saying that so many people say Glue Wednesday at BCB, Bolingbrook Community Basketball. So many people know um, uh, Wednesday as Hump Day. And I say that hump has the connotation of the need to get over when, in fact, what we need to do is keep it together. So I see Wednesday. What's up, Brian? I see Wednesday as <coughs> the middle of a traditional seven-day weekend week. Excuse me. That keeps the week end and the week beginning together and that's why Wednesday is the glue and that's why I call it glue Wednesday remind us let's find ways to keep it together because we all need to you know we all fall apart at some spot in in the day or in our lives and we you know we don't always have it all so together and that's okay this year wow hey at least long time in Chicago in the house good to see you all right well let's get the broadcast started it's one o'clock on my clock in the east and uh uh, it's, it's uh, central and western time somewhere else. Anyway, as you can see in the introduction up there, I did a mailing last week that stated, well, 
I hope you are still in love after this past Valentine's week. And I got a reply, uh, and that's the shit, that was just part of the message, but I got a reply from my friend Tony in Charlotte, and she said, and that, and that walked right into the topic I was planning on discussing this week, and I had all, because I had already gotten a message from my friend Walter in Chicago, who talked about something that I said in last week's broadcast. And so I decided that um, this would be a good day for us to dissect love, the topic of love, because last week I talked about the three R's, and that was the research, the real stuff, and the resource. Are you researching your topics, and, and, and when you do the research, does it really apply to you? So that's the real stuff. And once you see research, if it, if it applies to you, great. If it doesn't, that's fine. We, you know, so many times people say, oh, that's nonsense. I don't want to hear it. No, it just doesn't apply to you. It makes sense to somebody else. That will help with your communications and your relationships, by the way, because you're open to somebody else. Hey, Patricia, uh, Washington, met you in Washington at the Earn Fair. Yes, hey, what's up? Okay, good. All right, thank you for the memory. I'm not going to keep doing shout out because I know Pat. Um, but uh, uh, um, what was I talking about? Um, Oh, so we're talking about, so so the research, the real stuff, when the real stuff applies to you, because we want research to apply to us because it's called finding, catching yourself doing something right. A lot of times you, you do research so we can say, oh, okay, I knew that. Oh, that's why I do that. So that's when it becomes the real stuff and you let it apply to you. And as you get to know yourself better, that's why that walked us into the topic of love. When you get to know yourself better, then you can look into your resource because where are you getting your information from? You know, and if you love yourself and if you like yourself, because I always say that liking is the cherry on top of the cake, but if you love yourself and like yourself enough, then you know who to get your information from. You know who your resource is because like attracts like, and you'll find the messages that you need to get on with life. So, hey, Catherine in Boston, man, a long time. Good to see from you as well. So here's what I got. So let me let me go on and, and give you what I got because I, 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 I here it is. <laughs> First of all, I got an email from Walter. It said, brilliant message today. He said, now, I don't know. I didn't know that you were a preacher as well. So we laughed. Uh, FYI, uh, I, oh, by the way, I had talked about the fact that it was when I was 36. That was the first time I remember my mother telling me that she loved me. And so that was one of the points that I, that moved us into the topic of love as well. So that's why Walter wrote, uh, FYI, I was 22 and my mom was 43 when she died. And March 13, 2020 will be 30 years of her passing. And like, and, and like you, I can't recall her telling me that she loved me, that she, that she loved me, although I know she showed it daily, mainly by the beating she gave me, <laughs> smile. She'll, she'd say, I'm beating you because I love you. I understand it now. This is Walter again. I understand it now, but I, of course, I did not understand it back then. And then, so I wrote back to, to Walter. I wrote, well, I got them same quality ass whoopings from my mom's. And I certainly hope I sound like I was celebrating her when I mentioned her airport discussion when she first told me that she loved me. We'll double check the recording because it was not a complaint at all. See, when I talked about the fact that when I was 36, it's the first time I remember my mother telling me that I loved, that she loved me, I was not complaining. Instead, it was one of the most shocking and satisfying days in my life. I'm going to use it in next week's broadcast and show a card from her that I keep framed over my desk, and I'll show you that at the end. My mother was 21 years old, older than me as well. See, so Walter said he was 22 and his mother was 43 when she died, 21 years. My mother was also 21 years older than me. And none of us required back then the I love you line. It's been trumped up over the years, but me and my sister did make a conscious decision to show more emotion to her two kids based on what we didn't get from our parents. I think the decision was more based on adding to their lives more so than feeling something was subtracted from ours. We had an absolute ball, and I never doubted that either of my parents loved me. Though we got the, who do you think you are sermon instead of, I'm beating you because I love you from my mother, my father's scripts were, you got a good mother, or 
I would have been president if my mother had allowed me to go to school. See, he had to drop out of school when he was in the sixth grade to help support his family. Yes, we all are. Oops. Uh, uh, pull the page too quick. Okay. All right. So that was how I started my conversation with Walter. Next, let's walk you into Tony. Tony wrote, so true, because I had said in my, um, in, in my email, like I said, it, it said, I hope you're still in love after this past Valentine's weekend. So Tony wrote, so true. We must trust the journey. It's in the journey where we earn experiences that become tools to help us grow and navigate through life. Still in love after Valentine's. What an awesome topic. I love knowing that one day out of a year can never measure the true depth of love. I love knowing that all my relationships are valued and treasured. I just pray that God allows me to pour it out generously to those who appreciate the significance of its true value. Then she sent me a post that she found about love, stating that there were eight types of love, according to the ancient Greeks, which is why I signed my announcement um, in the corner up there with eight different color hearts. That you, so you can see that in the announcement. I'm not going to try to connect each heart to description of each kind of love, but I'm going to touch on the Greek touch behind each of them, yet not in the order they were listed. I'll start with a dash of love that I learned that I believe Tony was talking about. And that was number three. It's phileo. And it's, it's spelled P-H-I-L-I-O, but it's pronounced phileo. The Greeks defined this kind of love as affectionate love. In other words, it is the kind of love that you feel for your friends. Ironically, the ancient Greeks thought this kind of love was better than eros, which is sexual love, because it represented love between people who considered themselves equals. While a lot of people associate the word love with romance, Plato always argued that physical attraction wasn't necessary for love, hence why there are many different types of love. This type in particular is often referred to as platonic love, love without sexual acts. So that's phileo. And then, so that's the type of love that I believe Tony is talking about in her response, where she says, uh, you know, I love knowing that one day out of a year can never measure the true depth of love. I love knowing that all of my relationships are valued and treasured. See, so, so that's phileo. Then I figured out that Walter and I were talking about actually number five on the list, and that's it's spelled S-T-O-R-G-E. So at first I thought it was going to say storage, but it's pronounced storge. Storge, and it's familiar love, familiar love, fam family. Okay. And oh, by the way, I need to go back because I did a little extra looking into and uh, phileo. It's also in the word Philadelphia. So, so it's brotherly love. That's 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 also that's that the platonic. See, research moves on top of research sometimes. Okay. So back to storge, familiar love, right, which is also the word family. You see, is in there. This type of love looks and feels a lot like uh, phileo. However. However, this love is more like a parent-child love. So it was actually kind of obvious for me to figure that one out for me and Walter. But like Phileo, there is not physical or sexual attraction, but there is a strong bond, kinship, and familiarity between people. And see, so they didn't necessarily say from, from, from uh, a store gay, even though it says from familiar, it says familiar, it doesn't say family. But it's, it's obvious that family is in there. And so I say, of course, I'm familiar and thankful to both of my friends, Tony and Walter, for inspiring today's topic. Tony is a new entrepreneur with her aromatherapeutic purpose-inspired candles also offering classes in candle making. So it, it's funny how, you know, I also looked at how the, the comments go into who the person are, is. You know, she talks about her, her company's called Purpose Inspired Candles, and, and it's for aromatherapy and love and calm, and that's the, what her scented candles do, okay? Walter, um, Walter, uh, he had, I, I look back at the fact that he said that, um, 
uh, that he laughingly called me a preacher because he has a jazz show in Chicago called Windy City Jazz on 106.3 WSRB. So I also wrote to him, um, the Lord says, make a joyful noise. So again, yes, we are all preachers. Keep placing your noise and message and spirits through your jazz selections. Even see how you carefully prepare for how you want to touch your audience and celebrate that gift. Never forget that when the doors of the church are open, the request is, is there one? So thank you, Tony, in your aromatherapeutic essence. And thank you, Walter, with your jazzy preaching. Um, two, so two types of love we just talked about, phileo, phileo and storge. So let me read the other six. Here are the other types of love, and maybe hearing them will connect you to and help you better understand your own relationships. Agape, which is number one, which is unconditional love. This is an altruistic, selfless, unconditional love. The Greeks thought it was quite radical, perhaps because so few people seemed capable of feeling it long term. Some people would describe agape as a type of spiritual love. For instance, Christians believe that Jesus exhibited this kind of love for all humans. He was selfless and sacrificed himself so that others could be rid of their sins. He suffered for the happiness of others. Number two, eros, E-R-O-S, romantic love. Eros is named after the Greek god of love and fertility. Therefore, it is usually associated with romantic, passionate, and physical love. It is, a, it is an expression of sexual passion and desire. The Greeks were actually quite fearful of this love, strangely enough. They thought that because human beings have an instinctual impulse to procreate, that this love was so powerful and it would result in a loss of control. And don't we hear that sometimes? Someone is so in love with somebody that they lose control. Actually, that's another type of love, but that, but that's kind of where the, the Greeks were going. Although the Greeks thought of this love, thought this love was dangerous, it is still the kind of love that is associated with passionate sexual love. Even in modern days, some people believe that this kind of love burns hot and bright, but it burns out fast. So that's eros. Fourth. And this is, is spelled P-H-I-L-A-U-T-I-A, -I -I and it's pronounced philatia, philatia, F-E, F-E-E dash L-A-F dash T-E-E dash A, philatia, which is self-love. In our modern day society, most people associate self-love with being narcissistic, selfish, or stuck on themselves. However, this is not the ancient Greeks, what the ancient Greeks meant by self-love. Self-love is not negative or unhealthy in any way. And in fact, I, a lot of times people say you're selfish. I say, no, you're selfish because you have to take care of yourself so that you can help others. In fact, it's necessary to be able to give and receive love from other people. We cannot give to others what we don't have. And if we don't love ourselves, how can we truly love others? Another way to look at self-love is by thinking about it as self-expression. Just as you might show affection and love to another person, you must also show that same affection and love to yourself. And I also think about this in terms of who, who was one of my models when I started my speaking business, Muhammad Ali, to always talking about how much he loved himself and that he was the greatest. And a lot of times I tell younger people, I said, well, you met him as Muhammad Ali, the greatest. I met him as Cassius Clay when it was not appreciated that he talked about his self-love and how much, how great he was. So again, generational, the generational de definitions that we have to become familiar with as well and really be conscious of how we're using words such as love. The sixth definition of love is pragma, and it's almost interesting because it, come, it seems to be connected to the word pragmatic, but it's about enduring love. In other words, it's also almost the opposite of eros, sexual love. It's just practical. Eros tends to burn out quickly because of its passion and intensity. However, pragma is a love that has matured and developed over a long period of time. A good example is the kind of old married couples who have been together since their teenage years and still hold hands. 
Unfortunately, this kind of love is somewhat rare to find, especially in society today. These days, people seem to think the grass is always green on the other side. And I always joke and say the grass is, if the grass is green on the other side, they may also have a higher water bill. But therefore, they don't have the patience or desire to watch love grow over time. This type of love, pragma, pragma, does not, does not require a lot of effort in a relationship. Both people are good at making compromises, and each of them puts in equal efforts to make the other person happy. The seventh type of love is ludus, L-U-D-U-S, and it's playful love. However, a better way to describe it is the feeling of infatuation in the early days of romance. If you've been in love before, you'll remember it as the butterflies in your stomach, the giddiness you feel when you see your love walk through the door and that feeling of never wanting to be without them. Studies show that when people are experiencing this type of love, their brain is acting much like it does as if it's on cocaine. In other words, your brain is lit up and active just like someone who is literally high on a drug. It makes you feel alive and excited about life. Unfortunately, you can do even more research beyond the Greek, because I'm adding this. This is not what I found in the Greek definition. I found that ludus is also defined as sport or play. This type of love tends to view love as a game. This type of lover, who's a ludus, L-U-D-U-S lover, views love as a game. And they take pride in having multiple conquests and will find it extremely hard to commit to one person. After all, they're all about the game and excitement that comes along with a new partner. And that's interesting because, again, I started out with the eight de types of love that I got in the Greek definitions. But then once I looked a little further, you see how they've updated different definitions in these different types of love. So just as I said to you at the beginning, control your vocabulary. Don't let your vocabulary control you. Research real stuff and resource. Don't let me be a resource of negativity or let it stop with, with me. Maybe something I said to you, you can go look it up and say, hey, sporty, here's another way of looking at that, And it, which is, again, what I did and I'm always happy to do. But I, I mean, there were so many different definitions that I just said, well, let me stick with the ones that Tony gave me. But, you know, always remember to go and do some research on your own. It doesn't have to be major research, but you have to be your most important resource because what you have inside you is going to come out and somebody else is going to need you to be who you are. And so the last type of love that the Greeks disguise, um, um, this described is called mania. Duh. Mania, like mania, maniac, right? But it's obsessive love. And mania is not necessarily a good type of love because it is obsessive. It's the type of love that can lead someone into madness, jealousy, or even anger. That's because the balance between eros, sexual, and ludus, playful, is terribly off. So, so those are the eight types of love according to the Greeks. Let's go, let me say the names. I'm not going to redefine them all. But the names were and not in the order that the Greeks did it, phileo, storge, um, where am I? Phileo, storge, eros, eros, I want to pronounce them right, that's why, philoftia, pra, pragma, ludus, and mania. And as I said, I'm not attaching any of the hearts in my description to any of these types of love. However, I will close by stating that the last heart in my description is wrapped in a bow because it does represent something special to me. It represents my 2017 prayer theme, prayer theme, which is hanging on my wall. Every year I get a different scripture from the Bible that I, and, and I let that be my theme for the year. And so here's the theme for 2017. It's right here and it says, uh, and so think about the heart with the bow on it. It says, above all else, guard your heart for it affects everything you do. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay far from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Then stick to the path and stay safe. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. 
Proverbs 4, 23 through 27. And I read that every morning. There's an idea for you in, ter in terms of how you build your love for yourself is have scripture around you. If not scripture, in inspirational sayings, read them. Don't just have pictures on your wall. Have, have words on your wall so that you can read what you believe. See, pictures have the option for interpretation. Words state the facts. And so put the words on your wall that will inspire you and remind you of who you are. And that's why one of the things that I said to you, I have one of the words on, on my wall is the card that my mother sent me. I'm not going to read the whole card. I'm going to, uh, and, and because it's, I have it stuck to the wall, I had to take a picture of it and put it in my cell phone. But here's, here's how she signed it. She was sending me a birthday card, hoping this birthday is your very um, best yet, creating for you memories that you can live. And she signed it, your mother, Leah, which was her nickname. And then she did L-E-A-H, love everything about her son. <laughs> Leah loved everything about her son. And then she wrote, I'm learning from you. Happy natal day. And, and though it's a week late, better than never. Smile. Okay. So, you know, so again, now you can see that's one of the reasons I enjoy having that on my wall. It's, it's just a card from my mother telling me how much she loves me. And then even using her name to make an acronym, L-E-A-H, love everything about her son. What can you do with your language? and names that you can help honor someone and show them how much you how much you actually love them. There are a whole bunch of things you can do. So look up those eight Greek things, but also look up the word love and look up some of the uh, definitions that you'll find. I'll, uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put the, the, uh, the eight types in the um, feed, and when you Google them, you'll see how they've extended the definition to modern times and how you can use them in other ways. And so thank you uh, for having the heart to tune into Glue Wednesday. Please talk about this and share this message and broadcast with as many people as possible, as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel. And let's all continue to spread the love as L-O-V-E, letting ourselves value everyone. Everyone in your life has some value. Remember, even the knuckleheads show you what type of person you don't want to be with. <laughs> so everybody has their value. How can you help them value? So I'll go right back through and do some shout outs and say, hey, thank you, Shirley. Glad, Tony, glad you like it. What's up, Giorgio? Uh huh. What's up? Hey, Brenda. Hey, John Adams of Chicago, two in a row. Ashley. Hey, that's oh, my little my little giant. Ashley, what's happening? All right. Good to see you. Uh, Chris. Hey, Chris Metz. All right. Columbia in the house. Shirley Hawks at my uh, speakers bureau in Chicago. Glad to see you. All right. Sheila Scott. I think uh, I'll have to come back to you, Sheila. I think I know who it is. What's up, Kevin Shepard? Uh huh. Becky. Oh my. On. Uh, is that hey, Becky? Is that you from the airlines? Uh, okay, but uh, Katie Rector, okay, what's happening? Diane, oh, homegirl, Mark Berger High School, Linda Murray, I love you and your little, and your daughter. All right, Jennifer, oh my God, there's a lot of y'all on there. Catherine, thank you. I, I, look, I really appreciate all of y'all for joining in. And uh, again, uh, if I couldn't remember where we met, you know, know that I still love you and I'm going to figure it out when, once we get off the um broadcast. Bishop Fulton, you never got back to me and let me know how your thing went in December. So let's talk soon. All right. God bless y'all. Take care. And remember, G-L-U-E, God's love undoes everything. Not that it'll tear things apart, but the things that are torn apart, he will bring them back together for you and make you whole. Over and out. Ciao.